is a nice combination of sweet, savory, and spicy. Hey friends, I hope your week is off to a great start. I've been getting a lot of requests for Chinese and Asian style salads, and I found this recipe on ForksOverKnives.com and it looks absolutely delicious. It's a Chinese cabbage salad with mandarin oranges. Beyond that, it's got a lot of other things that I love in a really big salad. So this is my very first time making the recipe, so we're gonna test it out together. If you've got a specific salad that you would like to see, let me know in the comments down below. I'm always happy to take requests. So without any further ado, let's get right into this. Since this is a cabbage salad, obviously we're gonna need some cabbage. So here I've got a head of purple cabbage. I've just peeled off those outer layers that are a bit funky looking, uh, leaving me with the bright purple underneath. And if you've never cut up cabbage before, it can be a little intimidating. I was always afraid to buy it because it's like, how do you get in here exactly? So what I like to do is put the stump end away from me, put my knife and tip down, and then just rock it backward. Then you can rotate the cabbage around and just cut through the stem. That leaves you with two halves. And now here you can see we've got a core that we need to get out. So the way you can handle that is put it flat side down now that you've got a flat side and just cut through it. Stand it up on its end and just cut it out. So this is the waste and everything else is edible. And we need this cabbage shredded, so I could break out the mandolin, but rather than the dirty addition, I'm just gonna use my knife and kind of chop this as well as I can. And I'd say that is roughly two cups of cabbage, so we'll scoot this aside. Also making up the base of the salad is a bunch of kale, so we need two cups again. I've got my kale washed and mostly dried off, so I'm just going to pinch the leaves together and pull off those tough stems. I don't wanna eat that. So generally I eat baby kale in my salads. However, this recipe is calling for full grown adult kale and adult kale can be a little bit on the tough or chewy side. So one way that you can make this a little bit more tender is by massaging it. So all you have to do is just kind of <laughs> scrunch it around and this will help break down those cell walls a little bit, resulting in a more tender kale salad. And you can see how the kale is kind of sitting more flat. And if you look, it's almost like when you scrunch up paper, how it starts to get the little creases all over it. Once it stops cracking when you squeeze it, that's when the kale has been tenderized enough and you can just stop. So the recipe does not call for massaging the kale. However, I'm not gonna eat an adult kale salad that hasn't been massaged. So it's just gonna be a much better eating experience. If you've got about five minutes extra, I would say massage the kale, totally worth it. Cool. So everything has been appropriately massaged. And at this point, we need to cut the kale into strips. So this is why we're using adult kale. Um, this salad is gonna have a little bit of like a slaw vibe to it. We've got shredded cabbage, we've got shredded carrots, uh, strips of bell pepper, and now we want strips of kale as well. I'm going to kind of stack my leaves up so we can cut it into strips a little bit more easily. So I'm looking to get some flat surfaces here. All right, and we'll just come in and cut this crosswise. So that left us with some Nice shreds of kale. I mentioned that we've got bell peppers in the salad here. I did a little bit of pre-work. When I did my weekly veg prep, I was cutting up my diced bell peppers that I always do. I knew I was making the salad, so I just cut some bell peppers into little strips here. They're about probably a quarter inch wide or so. The final thing we need to prep is some green onions. So we need a quarter cup total. I'm gonna be using three scallions here. I like onions, so I'm happy to go a little bit heavy if it happens. I'm gonna cut the tips off of these here, and then I'll just cut on the bias. And I'm gonna use the whites and the greens. Perfect, so we've got all the vegetables prepped. Let's move on to the mandarins. We need a total of six mandarins today, so they're generally pretty easy to get open and peeled. However, sometimes the skin gets a little stuck, so I've got my trusty little spike to help me out if I need it. Or if you can't find mandarin oranges, clementines would work equally well here. And I'm just gonna break the mandarins up into sections. The recipe doesn't specify whether we're supposed to remove the membranes from each little individual orange piece, so I'm just gonna leave them on. I personally am not bothered by having a little bit of pith and a little bit of membrane. However, if you are, by all means, uh, peel each individual section. I <laughs> feel like that's a, a very long proposition though, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. We've got all of the ingredients prepped for the salad. Let's move on to making the dressing. So with all the vegetables prepped, we're ready to assemble the salad, which starts with the dressing. So here in my big salad bowl that you all <laughs> know and love, I've got two tablespoons of orange juice just from another mandarin. To that, we're gonna add one tablespoon of tahini. I always like to measure the sticky thing first. That way, when I'm measuring out my liquids, I can kind of rinse off the measuring spoon. So with that in mind, it's two tablespoons of rice vinegar, along with two tablespoons of reduced sodium soy sauce. So technically this recipe calls for chili paste, not sriracha. However, most people agree that you can substitute chili paste and sriracha one for one without any impact on the overall recipe taste. The flavor profile of the two sauces is very similar. They're made by the same company. It's not a major difference and you should be fine to use whatever you've got on hand. The last thing that we need to add in is some sweetener. The recipe actually calls for cane sugar, which is a little bit surprising. I had one of these little 
sticks of Bon Maman honey. So I'm just gonna squeeze this in here. Before we whisk this all together, let's microplane in some fresh ginger. And I quite like fresh ginger, so I'm just eyeballing it and going a little bit heavy deliberately. However, if you're super sensitive to the heat of ginger, you might wanna measure this to be a little bit more precise. And then we'll just give this a quick whisk to get it evenly incorporated. With the dressing prep, it's just a matter of combining all the ingredients in our big bowl. Gonna put the oranges in first, followed by our kale, the cabbage, some of our strips of bell pepper. The recipe wanted red only, but I like multiple colors. I think it's just a little bit more fun. And then some matchstick carrots. The recipe wanted us to use chopped peanuts. However, I really like almonds. So now I'm using my salad hands here just to toss everything together to get it evenly coated in that dressing. This bowl is no match for this gigantic salad. So I'm gonna have to switch it up. Never thought I would see the day that this bowl wasn't big enough for a salad. Well, we've certainly got more breathing room in this larger metal bowl. And this is looking nice and evenly mixed. So the final finishing touch is just to sprinkle a few more almonds across the top. And there you have it. This is the Chinese cabbage salad from Forks Over Knives. This is absolutely massive. I think this is meant to be probably two or three servings. So I'm gonna break myself out just a smaller portion of this and we'll give it a taste. And this is one of those salads where I think it's actually gonna get better with age, kind of like a coleslaw because we've got really sturdy cabbage. We've got the sturdy kale. We've got the bell peppers and the carrots. All of this is stuff that can handle being dressed and not totally disintegrate. If you did this with something like spinach or a more tender green, you're, you'll definitely have a slimy situation. I suspect this is gonna hold up well. I'll report back and let you know how it works out for lunch tomorrow, but I am cautiously optimistic that it's gonna be even better the next day. In the meantime, I am starving. It is a little past my dinner time, so I am going to just dig in and let you all know how this tastes. Mm, nice and crunchy. I'm getting a little bit of heat from the sriracha in a good way. It's not overly sweet, which I like. I was concerned between the citrus juice and the honey that it might be too sweet, but it's just the right amount. The texture of the dressing is really nice. Tahini always gives a really pleasant mouthfeel. Ooh, the ginger's hitting me. We've got two kinds of heat in here. I didn't really think of this while I was making it, but we've got the sriracha plus we've got the ginger. So it's kind of two different types of spice though. So I quite like the balance of it. Overall, I really like the salad. It is a nice combination of sweet, savory, and spicy. So it's kind of hitting all of the different things that I like in a salad. Plus, this is a huge departure from the salads I typically eat. I never put fresh fruit on salads. I never cut my vegetables this way. So having everything in kind of strips makes it a little bit more fun and slaw adjacent, which is kind of a fun way to eat a salad. So super happy I made this. I will definitely make this again because it was not difficult and the payoff is a huge wow. So if you're in the mood to switch up your salad routine, I would definitely recommend you give this one a go. And if you'd like to see me test something specific, let me know in the comments down below and I'll be sure to give that a go for you. I really hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you did, please be sure to give me a big thumbs up and click subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.